Hello, hello. Oops. Testing. Can you hear hey, me, Brian? I can hear you, Andy. Uh, your camera. There you go. Oh. Camera's on now. Oh, finally. That is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, it is thank frozen. you for your patience. Yep. Oh, it's frozen. It's a little bit uh, choppy, but um, we can certainly make it work. Okay, cool. Yes, it does seem a little bit frozen. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, awesome. But the camera might be a little bit frozen. No problem. We'll do some screen sharing here anyways. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right, so a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are tuning in from. Uh, you know, this is Andrew, and we have Brian dialing in from the U.S., uh, from Sentiment, and we appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, so, look, this week will be a short one, and we are looking at what's happening in the market. You know, Bitcoin hit a high of uh, 70, close to 74,000, and then it dipped a bit, and we're, and the market's a little bit concerned. So... Uh, let's look at some on-chain metrics from Santiman, uh, and Brian will walk us through that and see what's what's going on. Over to Absolutely. you, Brian. Yeah, you bet, Andy. I'll uh, share my screen here. We definitely have seen, as you've mentioned, a bit of negative sentiment. This is the landscape over the past 30 days for the top 100 or so market cap assets. You can see lots and lots of bleeding. Bitcoin down 14%, currently sitting at about 61.5k at the time of this recording. Uh, Ethereum, Ethereum down almost 20%, just dipped back down below 3k once again. It's been uh, kind of teasing back and forth around this ra range for a while. And then you can see Dogecoin really uh, hemorrhaging fast, down 27.5% in the past 30 days. <coughs> Aptos, one of the biggest droppers, <coughs> down almost 40. And same with Stacks here, really. Has been struggling. Um, if I go to my watch list page, we're going to give that just a moment and we're going to actually see by sector how they've each been doing over the past week because there has been at least recently a bit more of a rebound um, and then kind of a ranging period in the last five days or so. But you can see on a seven day time scale, you know, meme coins have actually been one of the, the best returners up almost 12% in total market cap between the top 50 that we're tracking. Uh, social is up pretty considerably. Real world assets doing quite well. DeFi, um, AI and big data. You know, we're still seeing a few assets standing out like Render. Um, they've been on a big run even today, once again, has, has gone on a, a nice mini search. But, you know, overall, you can click on any of these and you can actually see you know, how they've returned uh, over the past seven days, it looks pretty good. But if we go to 30 days, not so good. Um, render, as I mentioned, let me find it. It's one I've been, I've been keeping a close eye on. Um, where is render? That's not, it's not showing here right now. It's okay. My point is, I'll just show it on the chart really quick. Um, mm -hmm. Other than a few specific assets, uh, most assets have really been struggling as of late. Oh, that's strange. Well, render actually may not be on, on our charts right now. So we'll just ignore that. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but I wanted so nice. to show some other things as well. Uh, one being, of course, how the whales and sharks have been doing. We'll keep this really short. Um, overall, you know, they have been taking some profit, which does explain some of the price drop, but it hasn't been significant. You know, they've dropped over the past five weeks about 34K Bitcoin. But before that, they had accumulated uh, 217,000 Bitcoin. So it's a pretty minor drop, all things considered, and really not something... I'm overly concerned about. I think that right now we're seeing that the sentiment is a bit overly panicked compared to what the metrics are showing, which are pretty neutral. Um, you can see the supply and exchanges was going very slightly up 
uh, represented by this green line here. And then over the past week, once we turned to May, that trend turned back down. So that's not too much of a concern. Um, funding rate, <laughs> you know, it's been mostly neutral. You see here on Darabit, we're actually starting to see some longs form. That's not ideal. We want to actually see more shorting going on. Um, but it's mostly flat. I mean, no, no real anomalies like we saw way back prior to the all-time high. If you guys remember um, when Andy and I spoke back in March, um, we were pointing out all of the, the crazy longs that were going on. Uh, and obviously when these big divergences happen and longs are paying shorts just to bet in favor of the market, that greatly increases the likelihood of a big correction like this. So we're actually rooting to see more shorts show up, kind of like what we saw about a week ago. You see these big short lines show up right before they got liquidated and we had this decent sized green candle. Well, now we're fading again and traders really don't know what to do. They're, they're kind of sitting on their hands and waiting for a, a big, big move in one direction at this point. Also check out the total amount of holders, how they've kind of flattened out Historically, they're always rising a little bit. There's way more non-empty wallets being created on a daily basis than there are being liquidated on a daily basis, which is why this line tends to rise over time. But during these periods of flatness, that's actually a sign of fear and indecision. And that can often, as we saw back here in January, lead to big run-ups in price. So that's something we're keeping an eye on right now. Um, I would, I would be interested if this line starts to actually decline like we saw in late January. That would be a great sign uh, because we want to see traders panicking right now. We want to see them um, selling off their bags and the whales and sharks scooping them up because that usually foreshadows price rebounds. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of us are, are kind of crossing our fingers that we see 70K again sometime soon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm just wondering whether, you know, uh, the ETFs have, you know, potentially a part to play in this as well. Uh, whether, you know, the uh, so from the ETF side, whether, uh, you know, they, they've, they have certain set um, cut losses or or whatever. And then and then that's kind of uh, perhaps mo potentially moving the price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that the inflows and outflows have kind of flattened out a bit. Um, mm -hmm. There's still plenty of volume, billions of dollars per day, but uh, there's certainly not as much money flowing in as we saw during those first two months of hype. Uh, it's kind of faded down and there's even been a few days where there's more outflow than inflow. So um, they're still very active, but it's not a whole bunch of new money moving in like um, we would be hoping for, because that would, of course, be a great supplement uh, that we could look to to help boost prices without so much activity happening on chain. Yeah, absolutely. And then speaking of on chain, you know, we can look at something like MVRV, which is showing that the 30 day MVRV is a little below zero. So buying in or adding to your position right now you'd be doing so historically at less risk than average on the short-term scale. But on the long-term scale, there's still a bit of overheated signal going on here indicating uh, average traders who have been active in the last 365 days are up an average of 24% on their money. Uh, ideally, we wanna be buying when both of these lines are below zero. Um, so it's more of like a neutral signal right now. You can gamble a bit on the shorter term time scale but long term this is still pointing to us needing to see a bit more of a correction here or at least a flattening out period and then a couple insights that we posted over the past week um, this one's interesting just today we noticed there was a pretty big boost in uh, 1k to 10k wallet holdings this is kind of the largest tier of whales before we get into those 10K plus BTC exchange addresses. Yes, there are plenty of exchange addresses mixed in here as well, but we've done a, a little bit of testing to find that uh, this is kind of the largest tier where we typically see actual 
self custody holders moving around coins and impacting prices. And there is quite a bit of correlation between this tier and what happens with Bitcoin's price. So good to see that we're seeing a nice big boost for the first time in really a couple of weeks. It's rebounded back to the same level as April 27th. So a little two week high there is, is a good sign that we could see a mini rebound in the near future. Um, you can see we mentioned AI and big data. Also check this out. Um, one thing that we've been increasingly looking at is the RSI. Um, let me open this article really quick. And I'm just going to uh, go to the template. RSI. So you can see a whole lot of lines here. I'm just going to go to the last week to make it simple. Zoom in on Bitcoin's price. So anything above 50 uh, means that there's a little bit more risk than average. Anything below 50, then you've got less risk than average. So right here down at the bottom, this is um, Shiba, which is right now really struggling. It could end up being a potential rebounder if Bitcoin starts to stable out. On the other hand, Toncoin has been on a massive run. It's really, really grown uh, its market cap significantly uh, here in 2024 as one of the best performers. So not surprisingly, it's a little bit overheated compared to everything else. Uh, another way you can look at whether things are overheated, overheated or underheated is looking at our MVRV Sandsheets model. Um, this is showing the market value to realize value. And all these high green bars are indicating that it's significantly underbought that respective asset. Most of them are showing semi underbought to underbought signals right now, which is a great sign. Altcoins, as we saw on the 30 day scale, have really been struggling. So it doesn't guarantee that we're about to see this big bounce, but historically, if you were to say dollar cost average a little bit at this spot, it certainly wouldn't be the worst idea considering we're mathematically in a spot where average traders have taken big deficits and losses on these assets. So that's kind of where we're standing from a, a math slash on-chain perspective right now, Andy. Yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, I mean, MV MVRV is one of my my favorite metrics on sentiment. I, I, I actually have a question. So so this this is a question about the N MVRV uh, metric that is um, uh, for for Bitcoin. So as I understand it, uh, it scans all the address addresses with Bitcoin balances in them, and then uh, and then tags them at their last transfer in price yeah so right far. so so any yeah. wallet that has been active yeah uh, and and within a given time frame so if we're looking at the 30-day okay. time frame if it has made at least uh, one transfer in during that time yes it's measuring the return based on when that happened within the 30 days if it didn't yeah. happen within 30 days it's ineligible and isn't counted um, and it ah, okay. basically measures, let's say they moved in Bitcoin 15 days ago. It's measuring what their percentage is based on the current price versus the price they received that Bitcoin 15 days ago. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now that, that clears things up. So if it's a 30 day MVRV that we're looking at, then it's only for the last 30 days. If it's 365, then it's only for the last right. year or and so. And blending okay. all of those wallets that have gotten inflows in the past 30 or past 90 days. Okay. So come cool. up with an average percentage. Exactly. Cool. Cool. Okay. Now that, that gives a lot of clarity. Thank you. So this was this would ex exclude, you know, like Satoshi's wallets, uh, you know, and, and, and all those because um, they right. haven't if been they active for a long for a time. Decade, yeah. Exactly. Then, then they're not active wallets in the past 30 days. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Right. Thank you. Absolutely. So sometimes MVRV, you might just say, oh, well, Bitcoin's up 12% uh, in the past 30 days. Shouldn't the MVRV be 12 or plus 12% for 30 day holders? No, because a lot of people buy at the tops, sell at yes. the bottoms, make unoptimal moves. 
And usually the MVRV is trailing what the actual uh, time frame is because of all of their um, non-perfect plays that they're making in the markets over time. Yep, yep. And and with the say for example the thirty day MVRV, it's effectively a moving window, isn't it? So tomorrow. Mm-hmm we'll look back 30 days from tomorrow and day after tomorrow, we'll look back 30 days from day after tomorrow. So if you were at the tail end, uh, you know, say today, if we look at 30 days today um, and you didn't move it, you didn't, you know, there, there was no movement in that, uh, in that wallet two days from now, uh, it won't be included in the MVRV calculation. Yeah. 30 uh, day MVRV. That is correct. The way you're, you're describing it. Yep. Cool. Good. I hope the audience uh, can pick that up and and learn a bit more about the about this metric. Yeah, and in case you know the math is is not something you want to understand perfectly, that's completely fine. The entire point of MVRV is it's an easy way to find what those highs and lows actually are. When you hear, you know, you should buy low and sell high. Well, it's pretty hard if you just look at a random point on. Um, sentiments charts and see the price over you know the last three years what's a high and what's a low but if you look at a certain time frame we like to blend different time frames together so like this one is a midterm divergence model where it averages out all of the time frames of 30 day 90 day and 180 day mvrvs puts it all together based on what a regular 30 day 90 day and 180 day return would be and then tells us quite simply whether it's in an underbought or an overbought range. And obviously with markets correcting pretty significantly over the past almost two months now, March 14th was the all time high. Mm -hmm. um, You're going to see most of these being underbought uh, because altcoins have really shed a lot since that time. Bitcoin has itself, but altcoins have on average a lot more than Bitcoin. So yeah. Yeah, that definitely. that would explain why this model is showing so many, um, you know, suggest suggestive buy signals here. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, last but not least, I can show some of the social trends. Obviously, a big news story that I'm sure you've you've heard yourself, Andy, is that FTX is paying back all of the claimants, supposedly. So or at least 98% of its creditors up to 118% of their claims in cash. I guess that means they're actually paying uh, a bit of interest or something. I'm not an expert on that, but either way, FTX is by far the most trending topic over the past 24 hours as creditors, which is the number two topic, are also very interested in what's going on there. So um, I think that's a great great sign for crypto. The fact that, you know, uh, traders and hodlers can still feel confident holding their money on exchanges. Obviously, they would not want to do that over again and feel like they lost all their money for the past two years or year and a half since FTX collapsed. But um, at the very least, it, it appears as though the right result is happening. And that should be a slight boat of confidence that would keep people trusting crypto for the long term and that's an important thing that is that is it, it it's um it it's actually you know it's good for the uh, i guess the the psyche of the market it's it, it's it's it helps people restore confidence in in crypto um you know already crypto's got a pretty bad connotation attached to it um yeah. And, and just to, you know, just, just to note, um, what I found is um, the regulator here in Malaysia, um, um, they refer to crypto as digital assets. And, and that may be a, a term to kind of, I don't know, veer away from using the term crypto. Maybe they feel that crypto has some negativity or some negative mm-hmm. connotation attached to it. And so... Um, it's maybe a bit of a rebranding exercise to kind of legitimize it and call that digital assets. So yeah, um, that's uh, something to share. Totally. Yeah. I'm very interested to hear how other countries are dealing with this stuff. Um, 
another scandal that I'm seeing on the trending tokens tab here when I go to the social dashboard and I, I click trending coins. Monero is in the news. Um, it looks like local Monero, which is a, a large peer-to-peer -peer centralized platform for trading XMR, it's sunsetting because of the big global crack crackdown on privacy-focused tokens right now. And XMR is obviously the most notable one. So um, perhaps there might be some long-term concerns about XMR if that's a, an asset in your portfolio. Sometimes negative sentiment can lead to positive results. You know, we see prices actually going up right now. Um, that often happens with kind of a uh, sell the rumor, buy the news type of situation. But we will see how that goes. And then three other big caps, XRP with some new stuff. Uh, the SEC is labeling its new planned stablecoin as an unregistered crypto asset. So they're back in the SEC's crossfire right now. Ethereum, as uh, there's news about the Ethereum Foundation allegedly dumping 1,000 ETH. Um, and of course, Bitcoin is starting to get a bit more traction right now. It's not always on our top 10 list unless it's getting some increases in discussion. And right now there's quite a bit uh, related to uh, what looks to be uh, some sort of bot um, mm -hmm. and it's it has something to do with Reddit. Uh, I would encourage you guys to just check out the trending tokens page and read more about all of these stories going on. And there's always 10 coins listed here that have bullish uh, summaries, bearish summaries, and an uh, overall summary with the connected words um, in relation to them. Uh, and it's it's one of my favorite places to go and kind of collect the news uh, in an unbiased mathematical kind of format. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So yeah, look, uh, thanks for sharing today, Brian. I, I think, um, we'll probably, uh, it'll be a short session today, uh, just to have a quick update on what's been happening in the market. What, what's going on? Um, should we be worried? Uh, and, 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 you know, just generally what's happening on chain, uh, and also what's being discussed. So no, thanks. Thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah, sure fun. thing. Yeah. Always a pleasure catching up with you, Andy. And uh, we'll do an extra longer one uh, next month, perhaps, to make up for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 this time, uh, it's it's actually my fault. I'm having some technical difficulties. And and, and you, uh, the viewers, you could probably see that my face seems to be not moving at all as I'm speaking to you. So I uh, thought you were just sharpening up your ventriloquism myself just <laughs> talking without moving it's impressive yeah thank you <laughs> but yeah yeah absolutely i i hope to not have any more uh any any more technical difficulties later but yes thank you once again brian and thank you for adjusting the time uh for this call uh really appreciate that no nah, no problem at all always great catching up all right. So for those uh, for the audience out there, look, stay safe. Uh, and I hope uh, to see you guys next month. And once again, thank you, Brian, for jumping on today. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys.